Right, I do a lot of videos on this channel, but trust me, this is the one of the most interesting I have ever done. It is the Rogue, the brand new Rogue, versus very much one of the favorite drivers of the last few years. It's the Ping G425. There is a difference and quite a big one. Now, before we go into the detail of this video, it is predominantly about forgiveness, but there are other key factors that have definitely divided these two clubs up and ones that I didn't expect to see on camera. But before we go any further, I just want you to watch these, or read rather, these four statements from Callaway. This is all about the crown, the face, even the construction of the body of this golf club, this driver. And what you'll see is one word that runs through every statement, and that's forgiveness. So it clearly is a key element in terms of the performance of this rogue driver from Callaway. Then I want you to take a look at this from Ping's website, and as you can see, crazy levels of MOI. In fact, the limits of conformity right now. So you can see there's one key message in both of these two drivers, and that's that thing, forgiveness, which is key for every average golfer. But the big reveal in this head-to-head -head is not just about forgiveness, it was about overall performance, and that's where the big surprise came. Now, if you noticed in that text, you'll have also seen there are some other similarities between these two clubs in the way they're put together. Their tungsten weighting, which is placed right at the rear and centre, is 26 grams. It's identical in both clubs. In the Callaway, it's in a fixed position right at the very back to assist with MOI and also to assist with uh, CG in terms of launch. With the ping slightly different, I'm going to have it placed central for this testing, but you do have the option to move it to a draw or fade bias. There's a lot of similarities in the way these two clubs have been put together. Right, so they're similar in terms of the way they've been put together. They're clearly similar in who they're aimed at and what they're trying to achieve in terms of forgiveness. What we want to know the answer to is do they actually perform the same? And that's what we're going to do in today's test. I'm going to hit balls. Once again, we will use trackbound. We'll be looking at that impact location on the face. We're going to try and measure what happens to off-center hits with both of these clubs. Do we see drop-offs again in terms of ball speeds, in terms of carry distances, or are they both doing exactly what they intend to do and really providing us average golfers with ultimate forgiveness? Now, one key factor for me, an important thing to mention is this. When your next custom fit for any club, then please ask to see the TrackMan data in terms of impact location. It's been a massive learning curve for me that TrackMan 4 has provided me with that kind of information. And don't forget, when you go for custom fit, you can ask to access and see that information. Because what you want to know is not necessarily how good this club is performing when you get it out the middle, which is often the information that will be relayed by the fitter. But what you want to see is what happens when you don't get it out the middle. And again, that kind of information is available to you. So please start asking to see impact location when you're involved in a custom fit. It's a massive eye-opener for me. And as we all know, most of us average golfers, we ain't gonna be finding that center bit. We don't wanna know what happens there. We wanna know when we're spraying it all over the club face, how much distance performance are we actually losing? Right, so you may well be considering buying one of these two drivers, but trust me, there are some big differences between the two. From the Crown, they both have some similarities and they're a matte black finish. You've got those raised turbulators which make their appearance on the G425, which have never been my cup of tea, to be quite honest with you. But they've both got that elongated shape as well. So head shape wise, very, very similar and that matte black finish. But the other big difference is the way these two drivers sound. <laughs> that is like a gunshot. hugely different. I've always been critical of the G425 range in total in terms of the sound and I think it's something that Ping really needs to work on in softening the sound of these uh, drivers fairways hybrids off a little bit. The Rogue however goes in a totally different direction. It's so much softer, so much more muted and there's a clear noticeable difference between the two. From a price perspective the Ping is still holding its price. It's roughly around the start of 399 Great British Pounds. The Rogue is going to be released at 429. So not a massive separator, be considering these are two years apart in terms of the release date. But the other big difference is in terms of their overall performance. And that's what I'm going to get to now. 
Right, well, as I continue to collect data for both of these drivers for their overall performance, what I want you to have a look at right now is some overlays that show these impact locations on both driver faces. And what you're going to see is some of the balls that have come out the centre of the club face and some that have come out of the not-so-centre. And as you can see, there's no drop-off in terms of performance, both in terms of ball speeds and carry distance. And that's the real interesting bit for me. You're seeing information from both driver heads and they're doing exactly what they claim to do, what they intended to do, and that's provide forgiveness for off-centre hits for us average golfers. And that's a massive positive for both drivers. But the surprising thing that came from this test was one other thing that separates them quite significantly. And it shocked me a little. Come back a bit, keep coming, keep coming. Right into the fairway we're grabbing. Right, so you can clearly see from a forgiveness factor, both of these clubs are incredibly good, but there was one separator that stood out right from the beginning of the testing, which was the bit that I said surprised me a lot. And that is the overall performance of the Rogue. In every test I've done so far, not just today, it's been incredibly consistent. First of all, I want to draw your attention to this dispersion chart. As you can see, the Rogue was head and shoulders above the 425 in terms of tightness of dispersion. I leaked a couple outright, but the majority are so tightly packed, it's not the kind of performance that I normally get out of a driver, I'll be honest with you. Could well be, we just had a good day with the Rogue in hand, but like I said, it's being repeated on a number of videos right now. But then you go down to overall performance, and it was consistently longer than that of the G425. We got an average carry distance of six yards, which is quite considerable, but I would go more to or be swayed more towards this driver's performance, not because of distance, but more because of that dispersion and because of the consistency of performance. And that's why right now, as we stand, I'm struggling not to put this Rogue in the bag for 2022. So that's me done. I hope you enjoyed today's video. They're very much experimental when they start off. The picture starts to unfold and I'm not knocking by any means a G425. It performs incredibly well, but there are differences that we managed to highlight. And if you're considering buying either of these drivers uh, this year or right now, then hopefully it gives you a bit of a heads up. Anyway, feedback down below. Who's tried the Rogue? Who's finding it to be as positive in terms of its performance as I am? And I think that's me done. I'm going to carry on finishing my round here, which is another interesting experiment we've got going on right now at Carden Park. As ever, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.